Continuing this NTS application series, or how to apply the KSL shot cycle to yourself, uh, we're going to start to work on actually the steps in this video, and a few other things that are extremely important, concepts that easily get missed, that you must focus on in order to be successful, not just in this system, but in all systems of archery in my opinion. So that's what we're going to cover in this video, we're going to go over our steps, potentially a, a few key important details within each step that should be done in the very beginning just to make sure that that doesn't get lost, as well as a few things and concepts that really should just make sure that are thought about correctly in order to start off archery on the best foot possible. <music> So yeah, like I said, I'm working on making this a good resource for people to kind of look into on how to first apply the NTS to their system and what's actually important. This is definitely more of a beginner stance, a, st a beginner starting point. Somebody who hasn't done this system and is just looking to get started in it. You can apply it if you are already an advanced level shooter or are already somewhat proficient and you're just looking to integrate into your shooting style more of a system. That's what NTS or KSL stands for. It's a system. KSL is the key sick Lee. That's my coach uh, shot cycle or the NTS system, which is just for uh, USA archery and what they've named it, the national training system. And so it's basically the same exact thing. The, the thing that it does do is it gives you systems to use to fall back on when you're either under pressure or under stress or just looking to get better as a shooter. What should you be focusing on? This has a lot of different options and a lot of different levels to it. And as you will find as we continue to progress through this, things will become a bit more challenging or a bit more detail oriented when you're ready for it but that's the key part, when you are ready for it. Otherwise, many of the things, many of the steps, many of the details that ultimately get talked about so much more than the basics, uh, oftentimes overshadows the basics and then the main concepts totally get lost. So in this video, we're kind of just gonna go over the basic steps as to what is actually important in the system. Quickly, I will go over the steps then I can add slight different details within the steps themselves in case you don't know much about them yet. And then, like I said, I will cover a bit more in detail as to some concepts and some theories just to think about, not like high level stuff, just things to have in your head. Okay, so basically what this is, what the system is, is it has names for every position you are in. Positions is a relative term, of course. It's not really like it's an actual position. It's just a moment in time. It's a snapshot. So when I say set or set up or load or anchor or any of those kinds of things, uh, with the exception of potentially load and anchor, because those are very important definitive things that need to happen, ideally, but the concept of what is the position. It's just a snapshot. So if I say set up position, it is right here as I go through my shot. As you can see, I didn't stop, right? But many people will say set up here, then load, right? Yes, and I'm getting ahead of myself because I haven't given you the steps here, but I just want you to understand that when I say it's set up, you don't have to stop. It's not necessarily a stopping point. It's not an actual position or like a step. It can be construed as that way. It is important to the other steps, but it's not literally a step. It's more of a snapshot, a like still frame of this video of me going through my shot cycle. I will take a still frame of me going from this position here in rest, which is set position, up through to the draw into anchor. So if I go from here, I took a snapshot there and I have now paused it for you to show you what set up position is, but as it continues, you can see it's just a regular shot. And it's not necessarily, like I said, a stopping point. Although I did pause here because it's with a stretch band, it's a little different than shooting it with a bow uh, because a bow is a lot heavier and when you're shooting, it's just a little bit different. But uh, this is a great tool to have. It's a good thing to use for demonstration purposes. It's also a great thing to use as a learning tool for you to learn these steps and what it feels like, especially if you haven't shot 
archery before or much archery at all and you're just looking to get into it a stretch band is an awesome thing to use this is an advanced level one with a sling built in so you can't drop it it's a uh, available through Lancaster I'll have links in the description below for it in case you're interested it's a bit overpriced for what it is um, but you know it is what it is now you can also get stretch band material this is theraband material it is yellow the colors mean something the lighter colors are lighter in draw weight the darker colors are heavier in draw weight or you know tension basically so lighter is always better red or yellow i wouldn't go any heavier than that so anyway we're now going to go over the actual steps the actual process and i'm going to give them to you here in this video first i'm going to move the camera slightly and i've got another one set up over here so you can see my feet placement when we start talking about that Okay, so we're gonna go through the steps. The first thing is feet first. It's always feet first. And so if you watch and you look at this line here on the floor, you can see there's two different colors roughly on the carpet here. If that is the shooting line and the target is that direction behind the camera to your left uh, when you're looking at my feet here, that is the target direction. So the shooting line is here, okay? You stand with one foot on each side of the line. You can stand with them parallel to the shooting line, both straight ahead, or you can have a slightly open stance, which is this direction. That is okay if it's more comfortable for you, but you'll notice that my feet are still parallel to each other despite an open stance. So after feet first is set position, okay? So set position is just here. You have your feet correctly on the line, that's part of it, and then you're holding onto the string and grabbing the grip on your bow. This is set position. I am looking at the target at this point in time, and then I go through and lift the bow up into set up, which is roughly about here, just the height of the lift of the bow before I actually start to draw it back. That is set up position. So again, set, set up. Now loading is the position of where I have hit my maximum draw length before I anchor essentially. So loading would be from set to loading is here. This is the longest I will draw my bow back it will get slightly longer once I come into anchor afterwards, but essentially I am at full draw almost here before I come into anchor. So that's the next step. So set, set up, loading, anchor. That is just touching my face in a consistent place, in a consistent manner. You can do this in various different ways. There's various different ways to shoot a bow from you know recurve to bare bow, traditional compound, you name it. It's all different. Anchors are slightly different in those positions. So for Olympic style recurve, that may be under your chin. Uh, Barebow might be the finger in the corner of the mouth, uh, thumb on the backside of the jawbone. Uh, compound might be in between these two knuckles on your jawbone, something along those lines. Whatever it may be, it's just anchor. And anchor means literally what it is. It solidifies anchors, stops you from moving any other direction once you come to that point. So again, we're at set, set up, loading, anchor, and now transfer is basically just making sure that you're at 100% of your draw length. You are ready to go. You have now started to aim at this point. You're allowing yourself to just kind of be comfortable at full draw, start to aim and hone in on your target. And as I sit here and as I have transferred after loading, so set up, Loading, anchor, transfer. Expansion is kind of like transfer in the physical aspect in that you basically move your body around and you kind of lengthen your draw length ever so slightly. It is called expansion because you are expanding your draw length just a tiny amount. Not a lot, just a little bit. So load, anchor, transfer. Now I'm expanding, I'm slowly increasing my draw length, and then I follow through. And, and it's really no difficult than that. It's those seven steps. Set, set up, loading, anchor, transfer, expansion, and follow through. <clears throat> You'll notice that I did not say release. There is no release in this system. There shouldn't be release. Release is not that critical, it's not that important. It does happen, you do let go of the string, the string pushes your fingers out of the way, but you follow through with that same tension that you have built up during the expansion phase. So load, anchor, transfer, expand, I'm expanding my draw length slightly, expand, 
and follow through, but I'm keeping the expansion going. You can see I actually follow through. So the healthy way to really approach this method in any style of shooting, in my opinion, is to not focus a lot on the release itself. Focus on the other parts that helps you get to that position, gets you to the point of shooting good shots time and time and time again. Release happens, that does happen. You have to have some sort of releasing of the string in order for you to shoot the bow. But it is not important. The most important thing is the follow through in my opinion. And that's one of the things that gets missed in this system is where the importance of focus is. So you'll notice that this is very abbreviated. There's not a whole lot that I gave you in those seven steps in the way of detail. It's very vague in the positioning, but the ultimate steps are there and it's just repeatable. So no matter what, I'm talking to my buddies, having a good time, I'm shooting at the range, I'm shooting with my friends, I'm at a tournament uh, for the first time, I am anywhere, doing anything at any point, always I hit my steps, feet first, Set position, set up, load, anchor, transfer, expansion, and follow through. It's really that easy, not much more difficult than that. So that's where you really want to start, is just with those basic seven steps and just continue to go through the process. As you shoot and get comfortable with shooting more and more, you can talk yourself through these steps if you'd like. It's very helpful for new people to make sure you don't forget things and to also make sure you're doing them. Set, set up, load, anchor, transfer, expand, follow through. And literally, talk yourself through it in your head because words mean something. When I say purple elephant, you're gonna think of a purple elephant. But when I say think about this feeling, it's vague. And your feeling is gonna be different than the next person. So when I say load, you know this position here where you're almost to full draw just before you come into anchor. That is load, okay? So it's, it's just that simple. So really focus on those steps. Talk yourself through those steps every single time you shoot. Encourage people that you're working with to do those same kind of things as well. And then in addition to that, in this video, I wanna make sure I hit on the highlights, the important things that are really supposed to be focused on that get missed all the time. Very basic stuff. I've already covered a few basic things already leading up to this video, including standing up straight and things like that. I may uh, you know, reiterate those things and I may cover those over again briefly, so forgive me if it seems redundant, but it's often missed, especially in the beginning. If you haven't seen the rest of this series, by the way, I have links in the description below and a card at the top up there for you to check out to see the rest of the videos leading up to this and uh, you know future videos that are coming about later than this. So anyway, one of the main things that gets missed is the actual thought process of what one should be doing while they are shooting. People get lost, people forget it, people stop doing it, people change it every shot or different shots or from day to day or over months, over years, whatever. But I can tell you that I think and talk myself through these steps almost the exact same way that I do when I was learning the method itself. It's not as rigid as it was earlier on in, in the days of learning this method, but I still talk myself through it. I still hit my marks, I still make sure I do the steps, and I have now narrowed down my focus onto things that are more important for me to make me successful, to have a good shot outcome. How I find those individual things that are important to me is because I pay attention. I watch myself, I listen to myself, I feel what's going on in the shot, and then I make adjustments from there. So what might be load to you might be different than your friend. For me, it's what I feel in my back. It's how I gauge where my load position is. I can do it with a stretch band, I can do it with a bow when it's very rigid, or I can do it without it, load. It's the same here as it is with my stretch band, as it is with a bow. My load position is the same thing, despite not having the limitations of a stretch band with the draw weight or the limitations of the string and the grip being directly connected as it is on a bow with the limiting factor of a string. I know my positions because I have paid attention to them all the time. So that's very important and it often gets missed is you do need to pay attention. Anytime you want to get good at something, not necessarily just for a hobby's sake, but like if you want to get to a decent level of proficiency to feel like you have a bit of an expected outcome every time you let go, every time you shoot the shot, 
or at least a hoped expected outcome, then you have to try to do the same thing over and over again. If you're not trying, then you're not going to get better. And you know, that might be okay for some people, pure recreational shooters, pure arrow flingers, not necessarily, you know, archers, but pure arrow flingers that are just shooting arrows. They're not paying attention to how it feels. They're just shooting arrows, having a good time, and that's awesome if that's cool for you. More power to you, I'm happy that's fun. But if you want to get better and really get proficient at what you're doing, you try to do the same thing over and over again. You have a system, you have a method behind the madness. And that's what this is of set, set up, load, anchor, transfer, expansion, follow through. There are some important details that again, like I said, get missed. And one of those is trying to do the same thing over and over again. Don't lose that. I still do it. Even at the highest levels at the Olympic games, I fall back on basics. I go through my steps, I hit my marks, and I can shoot tens under extreme pressure with literally millions of eyes watching me. So you can do it too, you just have to try to do it every single time. There are two more important things that I'm gonna give you by the end of this video that I really think are important details to add early on in this stage, just to have as a bit of a concept in the back of your mind to make sure you don't lose this stuff. So the first thing is more of a physical thing, and it is to just make sure you never lose your draw length. Okay, so the best way I can describe it is if this is this position here, rest, set position, this is set, and this is the moment before I let go of the string, which is my maximum draw length. So the longest my draw length will ever be is here before I let go of the string. Okay, so set to just about letting go of the string. As I go to draw the bow back, I want to always progress this way. I never want to go back this way. What that means is, as I go to draw, I go from set, set up, loading, and then as I come into anchor, if you watch, I don't lose my draw length, I just come straight up into anchor. Losing my draw length would be, and this is extremely over-exaggerated, but I want you to understand, load, anchor. So if I draw back strong and then I relax into anchor, I'm actually losing my draw length. If you pay attention to the distance between my two hands, load, anchor. That is losing my draw length. So I have now come from set towards full draw. I've gotten closer to full draw, but then I lost it as I came into anchor and now I have to fight my way back. Also, people will do that here too as well as they go from load to anchor and then as they go to transfer or they expand or maybe they're not, they're continually losing their draw length as they're aiming because they're paying attention to aiming. They've lost focus on the draw length and then the shot breaks and it's not consistent because how long they aim for directly affects the length of their draw length by the time they let go of the string. So they've come towards full draw, but they're losing it, losing it, losing it, losing it, losing it, and then they shoot it and they can't possibly expect consistent results. So keeping your draw length. It's not something you'll really hear anywhere else, but that's the principle is to, as you move forward, never lose it. Don't ever go backwards. I want you to go from set Set up, loading, I'm lengthening my draw length, it stops, I'm increasing my draw length into anchor, slightly increasing my draw length on that transfer, and as I'm expanding, I'm continually, slowly increasing draw length, almost mentally more than I am physically. It's just ever so tiny, you really shouldn't see it on the outside, it's an internal feeling that I have. Increase, 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 expansion, follow through. And that is how you do it. Don't lose the draw length. That is very, very important. It's a really critical thing to make sure you don't lose the draw length because that will tend to lead to a collapse over time. A collapsing release is something that is very common in archery. And that is when somebody has come to full draw, they've been completely static. And when they let go, they actually will come forward on release and kind of literally collapse on the shot instead of it being nice and strong and following through with a bit more authority, they have this tendency to hold on to the bow and it be very disturbed on the release and very slow and sluggish and overall lazy. And that leads me to my next and final point of what's really important to make sure you get down into this system. I've already said it before, but it's important to, to repeat it now, and that is to follow through. A lot of people, when they first pick up a bow, for whatever reason, don't follow through. They tend to come to full draw, and when they let go, 
they keep their fingers right here, their arm stays static, and the arm and the hand and everything when they let go just stays there and it doesn't do any sort of follow through. Follow through would be this as I'm expanding, making my draw length slightly longer, and I follow through. You'll see that movement that happens back there from this position. A collapsing static release would be this, nothing moving. moving. A good follow through would be this, like that. So essentially, all you want to do is think about as you've built this tension up at full draw, the bow is wanting to pull you back. You're pulling against that tension, resisting it. You should be slightly increasing that tension against the bow, as I've already said, and you maintain that tension and only let the string push your fingers out of the way and follow through. It's literally just follow through. Maintain the tension as you're increasing from expansion. You expand all the way until you finish the shot, until you can't move anymore. My follow through ends here. When I can't elbow somebody behind me anymore, now I'm not letting go and increasing the tension. You'll notice that it's very smooth and fluid as I go to release, like this. It is not, I'm not adding that pressure. I'm not increasing anything. I'm just load anchor transfer, expand, 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 not load anchor transfer, expand, expand, expand. It's not that, if that makes sense. I really hope this helps. This kind of is a challenge for me because there's a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different ways to approach this. And just kind of having the basics of what are the steps, what order do they happen in, and then ultimately, I gave you three things that are extremely important that you can't forget. And those three things alone will make you a great archer if you could do them. And then having your repeatability of steps in the actual process gives you the opportunity to fall back on them when you're very proficient at this. When you're under pressure, you can fall back on that to bring you back to square one and ultimately perform well under pressure, which is the whole point of practice. It's about being able to perform when you want to shoot at a high level and the best in the world fall back on basics when the time comes, when the pressure mounts, because there's nothing else you can do other than make sure you do your job and try to do your job better than the next guy. If you like this video and you like this series, do comment below, hit the subscription bell, the notification button, uh, do thumbs up this video, like it, share it, everything, because that's ultimately how this channel grows, is from you, my viewers. And if you do enjoy this content and you like more and you want to support this channel, consider checking out the description below as well. There's lots of different links from Patreon to apparel to uh, channel memberships to a donate button, a PO box you can send things to, lots of different ways you can support this channel. My thanks goes out to everybody who does support this channel. Like I said, I'm working on producing this content for everybody around the world to enjoy for free because it just didn't exist when I was a kid and uh, I'm really trying to do my best to fill a void and to not put things behind paywalls because it just doesn't work. It doesn't work for the masses and I want good correct information to get out there because you know there's nothing worse than reading something bad, something wrong, and then having a, you know, a bad habit that you need to overcome after you developed it from bad info. So anyway, I hope this helps and I hope you enjoyed it.